Okay, guys, I get a lot of questions about uh, from people about asking me um, how to repair circuit boards, and how to repair electronics in general, and a lot of times people kind of sit there and they want to, they want to know everything you know about electronics in 15 minutes, but unfortunately, it took years of time, years of trial and effort. Uh, uh, a couple degrees and so on, just to understand what I know now. And even then, I'm I'm not I'm not the best guy in the world. There's always someone smarter than you. But <clears throat> what I figured I'd do, I'm going to make this video, and what I'm going to talk about is things you need to look up so you can understand how to fix circuit boards. This is just this is going to this is going to be I'm going to cover some of the basics of what you need to know. Okay. First off, if you don't know anything about electronics, the first thing you're gonna gonna need to know is um, what all the different components do, all the basic components do. Um, for example, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna make some random symbols, and you need to look up these symbols. And you need to understand what they do. For example, if you don't know what that is, you don't know how to find a capacitor in your schematics. Um, and there's other things you need to understand, like there's a simple resistor. And if you want to, uh, have you ever seen a, a knob you turn on your monitor? Well, that's a variable resistor. There's also a variable capacitors, which are rarely used in arcade machines, but I've seen it. But there's air core inductors. There's iron core or ferrite core inductors. Um, you have transistors. Now often you're going to need to know which pin is the base, which pin is the collector, and which pin is the emitter. And um, you're also going to know if in this, in this uh, uh, arrangement is it an NPN transistor or is it a PNP transistor? What's the difference? Okay. Now let me t tell you the difference here, at least at least in the schematics. Um, here's the same thing: base, collector, emitter, and it points this way for a PNP, and it points that way for an NPN. Um, there's also MOSFETs. Well, that has a gate drain and a source. You're going to need to know about that. So, what I'm telling you to do is research uh, basic uh, electrical components, okay? But I'm, I'm going to get into, once you, this is my, this is how I believe. I think you should at least know the very, very basics before I tell you about logic gates, okay? But <clears throat> there's there's just some of the basics. Just get an idea. Uh, Google ele electrical symbols. That way you can memorize which symbols go to which components and so on. And learn about how these components work, okay? I can't, I can't tell you all in 15 minutes, so you know. Anyways, okay. So, um... Let me tell you about Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra. Okay. Now let's say you have. Okay. Let's say you're looking at schematics, and you might see something that. Looks like this. Sure, right? You see it all the time. You can probably tell. What it is just for my picture, right? Well, inside uh, inside these on your schematics, there might be symbols like a a not gate. There might be four not gates in that schematic. Well, once you learn, um, you know what? Hold on. Okay. Keep this, I'm going to come right back to this. Okay, there's different um, symbols, different logic gates. Now, 
For example, this is an AND gate. Now, um, what, how an AND gate works is you're going to want to, um, how do I describe this easy? I, I can make this real complicated real quick. Well, I'll make it, make it look like it's complicated. Okay, A, B equals X. Okay, you want to find out, this is A, this is B, this is X. You want to find out, find what X is going to be. But it depends on the inputs of A and B. So, if A was a 1, or a presence of a signal, and B was a presence of a signal, then X would be a 1. So, if A and B was a 1, then X will be a 1. Now, there's what you call truth tables for all these different gates. And it goes something like this. A, B, equals X, okay? Now, uh, the way that's going to be is if you had a 0 and a 0, or two lows, your output will be low. If you had a low and a high, your output will be low. If you had a high and a low, your output's still going to be low. But if you have a 1 and a 1, your output will be a 1. Okay? Um, and there's many different gates. Um, for example, let's go with a OR gate. Okay. So you have A, and you have B, your output is an X, okay? Now, uh, on the truth table for this, let's separate this. The truth table for this would be, um, actually, the, the, this would be for an gate, and let's say for this, it would be A plus B equals X, okay? You don't need to know this, but it might help you out to learn these things in the future, especially if you're going to do any circuit board repair. You're going to have to know your gates. But, okay, truth table for that would be, let's say A, let's say B, and X, just like this over here. Because you have a, two inputs, A and B, and one output, which is your X. Okay, so if you have no signal, no signal, or a zero and a zero, you're going to get a zero. If you have a zero and a one, you're going to get a one. If you have a one and a zero, you're going to get a one. If you have a one and a one, you're going to get a one. Now, the way this gate works is um, either this input or this input. See, because this is an OR gate, and this is an AND gate. Um, if this input or this input is a 1, you're going to get a 1 on your output, okay? Uh, if both of these are a 1, you're still going to get a 1 on your output, as long as one of those inputs was a 1. And, okay, so, so long story short, learn about Boolean algebra, which is this what this is right here. Okay, it's not complicated. It may seem, if you've never seen this before, it may look extremely complicated, but it's actually extremely easy. Really, you need to remember, see, I, just, I already showed you two symbols here. Now, you, you can uh, print out something off on Google, I mean, offline, look it up on Google, and you'll get a really quick, easy reference guide. Just You can get something in one piece of paper, and it'll tell you, explain to you how all these, how these logic gates work. You can just stick it on your workbench, and while you're learning it, you can know. And it's, you really need to know about maybe five of these. And you already know two, right? <laughs> but... Uh, what I'm going to say now, I'm going to get this out of here, and I'm going to talk about tools you should, okay, I should tell you what. Let's say I first got a, I just got a circuit board, and I have it laying right here in the desk. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm inexperienced. I don't know how to fix this circuit board. The first number one thing you want to do is clean. Clean your sockets. Clean uh, your edge connectors, and there's there's good ways and bad ways to do that. This video can only be so long, <laughs> so um, and, and 
there's some people out there tell you to use sandpaper on your chips and stuff. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, you can use a fiberglass pen, or you can use a chemi chemical methods. Just don't use sandpaper on your chips or anywhere. Sandpaper should not be anywhere, unless of course you might have some acid damage. Okay, first thing you're gonna do is clean. Absolute first thing. The second thing I do is I test your EPROMs. Okay, and to test an e test your EPROMs, oh, I should have grabbed the board. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, got some boards here. And of course the board I grabbed doesn't have EPROMs on it. <laughs> okay, this is an Asteroids board. Now you have, these have PROMs, which itch, this board will read a PROM the same way it will read an EPROM. The difference is um, there's a window on an EPROM, but still you can test these chips, okay? <coughs> Now, um, before you do any, any repair work, make sure your ROM, your read-only memory on these boards is good. Because if, the, if that ROM's not good, the, the, there, there's no proper program to run. Okay, so EEPROM. Now, the way to test that is to buy yourself an EEPROM programmer. I spell it right? Anyways. Anyways, an EEPROM programmer, you can get an inexpensive one on eBay. I think they're like maybe 30, 40 bucks. They're called Willem. And uh, I don't suggest it. But if you're, if you want to stay cheap, get yourself a Willem. But um, I like uh, an EEPROM programmer made by Andromeda Research. You can look it up and they give you all the options of like a $2,000 EEPROM programmer. And it's like 200 bucks. So, um, trust me, just if, if you know nothing else but this, these two things will help you fix many boards. Okay? So, the $200 EEPROM programmer will pay itself off if you plan on doing this in the future. Okay? Okay, EEPROM programmer. You want, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your EEPROM programmer and pull off these PROMs, stick it in your programmer and read it and compare that to MAME files. Now, you, you, you've heard of MAME. Um, now, on, on your computer, you can play these ROMs, which someone uploaded on the internet, and you can play it on an arcade emulator called MAME. And uh, you, can, you can verify if the, if the files on MAME are exactly the same as the files on your real board, okay? So let's go to the third thing I do. Um, you know what? I'm going to keep this simple. You know what? Um, let's talk about tools instead. Tools, tools, tools. Now, uh, once you understand your logic gates, you can look at the schematics and see something like this and say, oh, I know what that chip does now. Okay, but the only way to properly test what's going on is to get yourself a logic probe. Now, um, a logic probe is going to tell you on, on, this, on this chip, okay, you can get your probe, and the way a logic probe is, you're going to have something kind of like a pencil, like this, okay, and there's going to be a wire, it's going to connect to a ground terminal and a 5 volt terminal on the board and this is going to you, you can probe around on a chip touch each pin okay and there's going to be lights on your on your probe it's going to it's going to tell you is this output high is this is this output low or is this output pulsing or is this output floating okay now, um, if you have an oscilloscope, right here would be your zero volts, right dead center. 
Okay. Now, if it's zero volts, that means your output would be low. Okay. But if it's five volts, it means your output will be high. But if it's somewhere in the middle, that means your output is floating. Okay. Now, floating output uh, many times is actually designed. Uh, uh, in other words, there, sometimes there's logic gates that are on these chips that the manufacturer didn't even use. And so they let, let, let them float. And it's your job to look and see if a floating condition is okay. But um, if you see a chip that, that you think is testing improperly, the next tool you should get is an IC tester. This is a cheap, cheap junk one. <laughs> it's on eBay. I think it's like 40 bucks or something. But let's say you have, have a chip and you suspect it bad, uh, but you're still not really sure. You don't know really what's going on. You kind of just pull that chip out, stick it in here, and, you know, press a button and it'll tell you if that chip's good or bad. Sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, okay, what else? What else can I talk about here? Okay. Get just okay. Now let me say one more thing. Here's more tools. We're gonna just we're just gonna call this tools from now on. Uh, oscilloscope. Now, if you if you're gonna use an oscilloscope, okay. One of the reasons I use an oscilloscope instead of a logic probe is because let me go back to this again. Okay, zero volts. Okay, this is what an oscilloscope is gonna show you. Okay, you're going to have zero volts and uh, with nothing touched. Well, this might be a floating condition according to your logic probe, but what if it's right here instead? It's a little better than a float, but it's, it's still, it's, it's, it's closer to five volts, it's a little iffy, I don't, you know what I mean? So, um, your, scope, um, your scope is going to tell you exactly what's going on. And it's your decision to see to see is that really good output or not. But a logic probe might say that's a good output. But it might be a little funny. But a scope will, will tell you that for sure. Okay, and it's kind of your judgment. Okay, and one cool thing about an oscilloscope is you can use it as a vector scope. Now there are Atari vectors that you can just connect your scope right up to it. And <clears throat> it will display exactly what should be on the screen. Now, that's a really good feature because many times with vectors, you don't know if, uh, if, it's, if it's a problem with your monitor or if it's a problem with the game board itself. So, if you can get a perfect picture on your oscilloscope, set to vector mode if you have that option, um, that, then you can see if it's, if it's, if it's the board or if it's the monitor. Because often it looks like it's this, it looks like like it could be either way. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna end it right there. We're gonna we're gonna just talk about those tools. But I'm gonna tell you a trick. Um, many times you have a game board that doesn't have sound. Now um, it could be the sound amplifier. It could be the wiring. It could be the speaker. It could be many things. It could be a voltage problem. But um, one one trick I do to see if if it or it could be a sound sound chip of some kind. But one thing I do is I will lick my finger, <laughs> and you'll usually see an audio. Now this this board does not have an audio amp on board, but you usually see an audio amp somewhere around this area or somewhere around the edge. And if you lick your finger and touch the back of the audio amplifier, you should hear a AC hum. That, that's a good good way to test it without any tools at all to see if you at least to see if at least your amp itself is good and working but um, well I hope that was useful to somebody I'm trying to trying to you know I'm trying to make this simple this video the purpose of this video is to tell you guys what to research and what to do and if you have any questions uh, leave a comment uh, I would you know, I, you, I would really uh, enjoy uh, talking about some of this stuff with somebody. But, um, oh, you know what? About your scope, a little unrelated, a little useless, but, okay, here's your scope. Now, uh, you see these squares? 
how there's squares all around the scope. Now, if you move this dial right here, it'll highlight different things. 1.55, 5 volt, whatever. And depending where you turn this knob is uh, what, what each square represents. So you can have each square represent 2 volts or whatever, and here's your 0 volts, and, and, and so every square will be 2, 4, 6, 8 volts. Or you can totally change it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 volts. That's what this is for, okay? And this over here is the time. Now this basically, uh, there's a dot that's going across, across the screen all the time, okay? And this will go so fast it's a solid line, or it'll go as sl slow as molasses, okay? And this actually, ch this actually changes the speed of which you're scanning the circuit itself. Now, uh, many scopes, this is a Tektronix here, um, many scopes, you can turn it all the way to time, it's usually not time, to XY mode. Now with XY mode, you have two logic probes, okay, and e each logic probe is going to have two wires. And you can connect the ground, both grounds, to a ground somewhere, and then your X and Y output, and you should see a screen, like asteroids or whatever, right there on your vector scope, which helps you know if you have a problem with the monitor or if you have a problem with the game board. But, uh, well, I made that really short and really sweet, but... Maybe that'll help somebody out there to know what to look, what to learn about uh, when it comes to arcade circuit board repair. Okay, I just pulled out some random uh, schematics here, and so um, now you can tell. Now you guys know what this does. This does. This does. This does. It kind of decodes. It looks terrible. It looks complicated. I know, but it's not. Okay, one more thing.